Moira may seem like an easy hero that doesn't get much value, but Moira can have a lot of solo carry and capability. Once you watch this guide, you'll be able to start carrying as Moira and you'll never need another guide again. Let me break down how you'll carry on Moira. We're going to go over Moira's priorities and abilities, Moira's ultimate coalescence, determining when Moira is good and the matchup guide, identifying a playstyle on Moira, and things like where you should position and path mid-fight to get the most value possible. Hey there, by the way, my name is Shift and I'm a top 500 support player and streamer. I've managed to reach 4534 with these tips that I will now tell to you. If you like this video or found it helpful, consider hitting the like button to help it get shown to more people. This is the ultimate Moira guide. Let me start by taking you back to what I said in the Mercy Guide. You can't heal stupid. Unfortunately, that's all Moira's got. Moira is a self-sustaining hero. Moira has no utility in her kit, meaning she can only do damage and heal. No other abilities like Mercy's Res or Brigstun. So let's break this down into her two components of damage and healing orb, as well as fade. Moira's damage orb is a good intro and exit fighting ability to get extra alt charge. Throwing damage orbs into a fight can be really good for starting to poke the enemy down. However, I practically never use damage orbs mid-fight. The only way you're going to put yourself over other healers is by sustaining more healing for longer. Moira heals an insane AoE 70 healing per second, and the damage orb while annoying to the enemy team provides less alt charge for you and less overall value. So try to use damage orbs only for intro and outro things when there's no healing to be done. I don't really recommend using them in 1v1s either because of how powerful self-healing can be. Let me explain what I mean by going over the healing orb, the savior of Moira's power. Moira's power comes in the form of massive amounts of healing Moira can do combined with her healing orbs and how fast her ult charges. Like I said before, Moira's primary heal does 70 healing per second. However, stack that with her healing orbs does 135 healing per second. 135. Healing orbs do 65 healing per second and do 300 total healing till it runs out. 135 is an insane amount of healing and can keep people alive so much. The extra orb not only provides this crazy healing, but also gets your alt charge farming. I use heal orbs practically all throughout the fight in order to build coalescence as fast as possible. But there are two things you have to know when using orbs. Firstly, Orbs have an 8 second cooldown and the orb lasts for 8 seconds, so you should basically have 100% uptimes of your orbs, please. Secondly, let me introduce myself as Mr. Shift Kid. I will be your geometry professor for today. When throwing heal orb, you need to be using these geometric angles to get the most value with them. If you threw your healing orb straight forward down a hallway, that healing orb will heal what it can, but eventually will pass your team and stop healing them. So use walls and ceilings and angles to keep the possible 300 total healing actually go off. Let me use an example. When playing on Rialto, when your team is standing at this corner, I throw healing orb up and down on the ceiling for it to bounce as much as possible and to get the most value. This way my primary healing will last longer and I can heal myself if there's some poke damage. That healing orb will be right there as soon as someone takes damage and it will begin healing. Besides ceilings, use walls to bounce and weird places wherever you can. This point on Nepal has a staircase with some small walls that I actually use to bounce healing orbs off for insane value. Moira has a lot of sustain even to herself with these orbs, so if you aren't getting any help from your team, you can basically give yourself your own pockets. Moira can do upwards of 89 healing per second to yourself. 89. That's a lot of self-healing. This is super important to do up against flankers that are carrying because they practically can never kill you. In order to do this massive amount of self-heal, you're gonna want to throw your healing orb in one of those good geometric locations so it keeps bouncing, then use your secondary fire to suck the enemy and get some lifesteal. The healing orb will do 65 healing per second and the secondary fire suck will do 24 healing per second. There's like no downsides to doing this. You are able to keep yourself alive easily and do damage to the enemy. You are your own pocket. Fade is Moira's biggest ability and it's literally so powerful. I know Fade only has a six second cooldown, however, you shouldn't be using it mid fight unless you absolutely have to. Try to save Fade for the last possible moment when you need it rather than doing it for fun because it is so powerful. For example, if you're in a flux but Lucio uses beats, and it doesn't seem like you're going to be taking more damage, save Fade for later because as soon as you land, there may be more damage and pressure you have to avoid and you can do that if you saved your Fade. 
Just use fade with a purpose rather than for fun. Also, one small tip, in downtime, tap instead of holding to heal because it does 35 healing per second over two seconds and you won't use all your resources. You could also use the healing over if you wanted. You need a good balance between doing damage and doing healing. Basically, you should never be doing one or the other for more than three seconds generally. If you only heal, you will very quickly run out of healing juice, and if you only damage, you won't be healing your team. So when you're in the downtime, when your team isn't taking a lot of damage, get in a small suck every off chance you can to help yourself. Also, a pretty standard thing to do is throw a healing orb in a geometric good location that bounces like before, and while that heals the team, you can get more healing juice and suck off the enemy. Always be having that back and forth between healing and damage so your resources never runs out. Moira's coalescence can easily turn the tide of a fight. You want to be charging it as fast as possible, but you're already doing that thanks to you throwing healing orbs mid-fight and getting insane amounts of ult charge. Most of the time you should be using Moira's ultimate to engage with the start of the fight or use it as soon as you get it mid-fight. Coalescence can heal and damage people all at once, so trying to get it through as many people as possible is going to get you the most value. When using it to engage, I normally like to throw a damage orb to do even more damage to the enemy team. You kind of do an animation cancel by throwing a damage orb and immediately pressing Q and W with your team. It's a pretty powerful space maker, but almost think of it like a cooldown. Use it. Use it. Use it, please! Let's go into the matchup guide and when Moira is a good pick. You want to pick Moira in a team comp that wants to play together. Moira does not have much, if any, long range healing, so you want to have team comps like Rush with Reinhardt or tanks that like to sit still and play together, even something like Double Shield. There always comes this question though whether to play Moira or Bap in certain situations. Normally I like playing Moira with Rush if the enemy team is not playing Rush back. Bap is good with the Rush mirror for his immortality field, but if your team is playing Rush with Ryan and Lucio, but the enemy team is playing Orisa or Winston dive comp, I like Moira better for the survivability and healing there. Moira also works great as a six man dive comp. Like I said before, Moira is a self-sustaining hero, so going six heroes that can also arrive on your own can be a good way to get lots of value by sustaining yourself and your team longer than other supports can. Moira can heal a lot, y'all. Moira is kind of weird though because she has no utility and she isn't really ever picked to counter a hero like I say to do with Mercy and Brig, so it can be kind of picky to pick Moira. Remember you can also play Brig and Mercy for more utility, but I really like playing Moira if your team needs a lot of healing for your tanks but your other support is picking Zen or Lucio or even Brig or Mercy as well as if you aren't getting a lot of peel and just kind of need to live and can't survive on Brig. When your team is not supporting you, you can easily keep yourself alive with Fade and Heal Orb, as well as do damage, heal, and do everything. She is really good in low ranks, but gets worse the more you go up in the ladder. Like I said before, Moria has no utility, which is more important rather than raw healing in upper ranks. Now that you know when to pick Moira and how to play her, let's go over some playstyles that you should be aware of. Even though Moira doesn't hard counter everyone, there are heroes that counter her. Those heroes are mostly D.Va and Ana. D.Va can counter Moira pretty easily by eating all of her orbs. Normally when I see a D.Va on the enemy team, I rarely ever throw damage orbs because they just get eaten. So be aware of throwing random damage orbs or even healing orbs just for them to get eaten and lose that incredible power you have over your orbs. Ana can also anti you and your team which stops literally all of Moira's kit. Moira can only heal and do damage so when you and your team is anti you really can't do much besides suck off the nearest target and hope your team survives. You can face to take the anti off of you, but remember only use fade if you absolutely have to. If the enemy Ana is getting lots of antis, it could shut down your Moira gameplay. Reviewing what we know from before, make sure you're also thinking about surviving yourself. That is the best thing you can do on support, so be using fade at optimal times, just don't use it for no reason, and use that healing orb and damage combination to do insane amounts of self-healing. Also, if you're running out of heals at all, that means you are not having the correct balance of healing to suck. Use those healing orbs in the nice geometry to heal your team while you recharge your resources and suck them off. Lastly, let's go over some important but underlooked part of any supports kit, positioning. Like I said before, Moira has little to no long range healing so you almost always need to be next to someone and preferably a tank. Moira is a main healer and she needs to be close to her tanks in order to win. Do not play by yourself, it really doesn't get much from Moira, and you can have your cooldowns easily forced by being alone and getting focused. 
stay inside your team and around shields and hardcover to ensure the longest chance of surviving. It's really important here that we play with our team so we can use our resources correctly. Use that map structure, but you will need to walk with tanks so at times it may feel a bit aggressive to be close to your tanks. That's okay, just path with them and walk with the walls as much as you can. If you are with your team, your geometric healing orbs will get so much value and you can save your fade for the best possible moment, forcing resources out of the enemy team and carrying. You now have heard from the Holy Shift Bible on the Moyer Guide and I've graduated from geometry class. Congratulations. Good luck with your games. Oh, and if you have a question or concern, leave a comment down below or come by one of my Twitch streams at twitch.tv forward slash holy shift kid. Thanks for watching.